Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Weekly brought to you by General Joe's Reborn.com with me as your host, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. For today's episode, I'm all on my own. In this regular video series, I round up all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. What is it, me? It's the Full Force Weekly is what it is. Hello, everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. I've got a lot of people in the chat already. That's crazy. Um, yeah, it's just me today. Unfortunately, Pat could not do the, uh, this uh, Saturday, but he'll be back next week. Don't you worry. Uh, so it's just me to talk about the, the week's ridiculousness, I guess. Uh, yeah, lots to get through today um, still. I've obviously, we had the pre-orders uh, we've had. All sorts of stuff, actually. Some some Super Seven updates uh, as well. Uh, yeah, we've got we've got a little bit to get through. How's everyone doing? How's everyone in the chat? Uh, see, every, I see a lot of people in there already. <laughs> Fashionably late. What is it? Ten o two. I mean, I I, I think I went live at ten. So I don't know. Is that late or is that on time? You you tell me. Um, in any case, yeah, got some stuff to to chin wag about still. Uh, how's everyone's week been? It's been a weird one, I've got to say. It's been an odd week. I have to, I have to admit, it's been all over the place, and uh, still some cool GI Joe news, I guess. So that's good. Um, but yeah, we're here for the Saturday morning listen and fun. Uh, I hope everyone is having a good weekend, and uh, I hope it gets. If it's not great, I hope it gets better watching this. I hope it gets better in general. If it's great, and I hope it, this continues that. You know the you know the steez <laughs> all positivity on the show <laughs> as, as I'm coughing <coughs> my tea. Cheers. Oh, it's a little ghost. Look, isn't that adorable? Anyway, right then, let's get on with the news because uh, we'll be here all day otherwise, won't we? And without Pat, this will last for about three hours. Somehow it gets longer and longer when there's less people on. Uh, anyway, first bit of news is uh, a little bit of Super Seven news. <laughs> A little bit mixed on the old uh, Super 7 News this week, of course. We have um, some positive and some negative. So there you go. Uh, now, of course, um, there's the first off, we'll talk about the cancelled wave of uh, figures, the um, the kind of like G.I. Joe Day special bonus wave that featured the Baroness, Lady J and Scarlet in their kind of Deke homage get-ups. Um, and obviously the kind of message went around in emails, especially, you know, basically for, for those... Um, uh, you know, uh, who I can, I think it was fair, pretty much everyone that's ever gotten on the Super 7 mailing list, actually. But the update was that we're sorry to inform you that the pre order for the G.I. Joe Ultimates Wave 6 featuring Lady J, Baroness, and Scarlet figures has been cancelled. Unfortunately, the requirements for this release going into production were not met. Now, the requirements for those to going into production are the numbers of pre orders, that's effectively what it means. So, since like simply said, they didn't get enough pre-orders. And a lot of people saying, well, they didn't realize it was a crowdfunder. Everything is sort of a crowdfunder with Super 7. Like, they put the pre-orders out, and it kind of, you know, if it doesn't do well enough, they will have to, like, they have to make a decision as to whether that is, you know, worth it for them to, to go to production with. And if it's not, then they have to make, you know, is it is it better that they just don't bother? And in this case, it clearly, the numbers weren't there and they couldn't do it. So it's that simple, really. A lot of people have been talking about the kind of, that kind of like post and rumor that's been going around about um, the whole like structure at Super 7 and everything. Um, and from what I've been told by Super 7 and Brian himself, in actual fact, um, that it's it's all it's not real it's it's all BS basically so um, based on that um, I just uh, that that's all that's all I can tell you guys is what they have told me and and that is literally from Brian not you know anyone else at the company that was direct from Brian so um, who like again I think time will tell with a lot of that stuff but at the end of the day. I I also don't really believe what was posted in that that stuff. It just doesn't it doesn't ring quite true to me. Um, in any case, that's that. A lot of people were asking me if ultimates have been cancelled, but no, no. In general, the ultimates is still a thing and will still continue to be happening for GI Joe. Uh, it's just that this wave didn't meet the pre order requirements. Now, one of the waves that did really you know absolutely great numbers uh, is the one that's shipping now. And that uh, this is from Veebs on Twitter. He uh, posted his uh, little kind of like the four figures and the super pack. Uh, if you ordered all of them from uh, Super Seven, 
and it looks to be a pretty solid um looks to be a pretty solid uh, wave they look amazing um i again I've, I've heard really good things as well there are a lot of people that have them i know um a few people close to me like uh, andrew franks and i mentioned that he'd got his and they were amazing justin bell uh he he had all of his out and he was going absolutely nuts for them so they're happy with them um and they look great and of course the zartan is even even cooler because it has that uh you know the the kind of uh, skin changing capability as well color change uh, and they've got a video on um, on Super Seven uh, link in the description, which kind of shows you that um, you know happening. And they do look great. And this Zartan looks really cool as well. Um, I don't. That's not the the final color. That's about a heart. Like I I did the screenshot about three quarters of the way into it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of it's really cool. So um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely feeling that Zartan. And the rest of the wave is solid as hell. But anyway, it's like like I say, it's a bit of positive and a bit of negative at the same time this week for Super Seven. But I would say not to worry too much about the the rumors kind of flowing around, um, and to uh, you know expect good things from the Ultimates line going forward. Uh, of course, we've got the the following wave after this one, which I always forget but i think it's crimson guard you'll let me know in the comments as well uh crimson guard how have i forgotten all of them already there's another wave isn't there and i always get i got these two waves kind of mixed up last time so this would be wave five would it yeah wave five ultimates um G I G. You've probably already told me in the comment. Oh, Roblox Cover Girl. Yeah, Roblox Cover Girl, Major Blood, Crimson Guard. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah. So it's. I mean, it's another banging wave, and they're obviously happening as well and and going forward. So it was literally. I think I would say that the 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 Deke homage sort of situation was probably a step too far with Ultimates at this point, um, and also the kind of you know the um, the price point. Was probably you know is probably an issue for a lot of people. I mean, there is so much product, is there not for GI Joe at the moment? The fact that we've got O Ring coming down the pike as well, Ultimates will still be a thing. Um, Reaction will probably be happening on a much smaller level, but you know, I think we'll get the occasional like uh, what's it called, like exclusive and stuff like that down the in low in the future. But I don't think it's going to be as prominent as it was with O Ring uh, kind of here as well. Um, and then I guess, you know, not just Super 7, of course, but then you think of all the classified product. We'll be looking at the listings later as well. And it is just a, some some might say nightmare <laughs> of uh, of things, but others may say an absolute, you know, an embarrassment of riches, uh, which, you know, it is really. I mean, we've got a lot of cool stuff in this, um, in the, for this brand. And, you know, that doesn't even kind of scratch the surface. I mean, we're still getting things from Mezco and 3.0, uh, and higher toys. There's a lot of GI Joe products at the moment, and you know you don't know necessarily how much more Mezco is going to come along. But three zero dropped that Snake Eyes version four homage not too long ago, so they're clearly still uh, you know banging out figures. And higher toys seem to you know they'll get in those modes where they release figures like you know uh, or reveal figures on a regular basis. I mean we're at such a ridiculous amount for higher at the moment. So it is difficult to have a high-end sort of line that is a bit niche and is, you know, quite expensive. It, I get it. I totally understand. Um, not everyone can get in on it. And, you know, it's maybe like a pick and choose sort of thing for some people. Like it's, you know, getting you just your favorite characters and what have you. Um, but yeah, it's it's difficult. And it's easier. I must say it's much easier to be kind of like, you know what? I can't complete this. So I'm going to like... I'm going to let it be. I'm going to kind of see, you know, and, and I get that that mindset as well. You can't support everything willy nilly and be financially responsible. It's like, you know, you can't do that. So I understand completely. Um, what I will say, though, is I do really like what Super 7 are doing with the figures. Like the ultimates are phenomenal. Um, I, I mean, I have the first wave. I have Flint from the second wave, which I really like, by the way. And I and I've I've only seen like you know even cooler stuff in the like uh, Andrew lent me the um, Palatoy um, Red Jackal Ultimate at Destro you know the Red Jackal one and the repaint of uh, Baroness the Red Knot Baroness uh, repaint 
and they were great. And I did an unboxing of those and they were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But like, so I know that the, you know, improvements are being made where they, they the, you know, errors are also made. Um, and we had that issue with the unpainted heads, which seemed to be the biggest issue for the longest time. And now it kind of isn't an issue. And, um, you know, we're kind of over that now. But like, it's definitely one of those things. And, and how annoying is it that we were going to get um, a Lady J in that deep wave that probably would have had a head that you could use for the other Lady J? Uh, and I think that's something that's missed a little bit as well. Like you might have been able to utilize, um, you know, her, that figure to get your Lady J with a painted head. Although it would have, well, uh, no, it would have looked weird with like the exposed other parts, I guess, but like still. Um, Uh, Stygian says, ultimate suffer from flaking paint, paint misfires, easily broken parts and limbs and loose limb syndrome. Brian doesn't seem to care about better QC either as these problems continue. I, I don't think you can put it all on Brian in that case. Um, I, I like the way that it works is you're working with a factory, a partner to, to create this. And no matter what you say or do, some of those things do not get done. And it would be a case like you kind of it's a lose lose situation for a lot of uh, these particular size companies, right? Because you'll you'll be like this needs changing. That adds another month on, and then you're kind of like dealing with the delay scenario, which everyone seems to be uh, angry about as well. It's like these have been too long now, and it's like well, what you have to kind of make your choice here like there's a balance at some point and i know that some of those things do happen to some of those figures but not all of them because i have a whole wave of them that don't suffer from any of that i have um, a flint figure that doesn't suffer from any of that i had two figures that i looked at or like i said on the unboxing that didn't suffer from that um you know like and and it, i think it's really just a case of he's not going to be in the factory checking every figure and like it, it's not that he doesn't care. Of course he cares. 100% cares about it. But sometimes, you know, you're dealing with partners in these scenarios. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, QC is, all right, okay, QC isn't great. But, like, what, could you could you pick another mass-produced line of things that doesn't have QC issues? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I find it difficult to find perfection in in any toy line company that kind of stuff it is really difficult to to reach that level and i think it's one of those things that yes you can iron classified hasn't even fixed certain things but they're in the same situation with uh, hasbro they're working with a partner um a fa factory situation who despite like you know dealing like talking to them on a regular basis and trying to get those things fixed it takes time for some reason, whether it's the thing of like, you know, they, they're still working on how to get it right. Um, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, the bendy weapons is a huge uh, thing still, but um, I wouldn't say it's fixed, but I've definitely not had as many issues with that uh, in like the last, in some of the recent figures I've opened. But again, it still happens. Um, and I think as well, well, let's, let's put it this way. I think we're also in a position where we see every single person's action figures <laughs> in this fandom. We go on Twitter, we see loads of people posting their, their figures. We, there are like hundreds of thousands of blooming YouTube review videos. There are so many groups where people talk about these figures constantly. Um, there are these videos where we talk about it and people talk in the comments. There is not a, you do not, you will not go, if you're like on in online for a, a long period of like, if you do what say I do, or if you do what other people do online, that level of kind of interactivity and uh, chat on message groups and things like that. If you're on it the way that you are, you see all of the issues constantly. And you'll see someone will post, oh, I've got this issue. I've got this issue. I've got this issue. You wouldn't have seen that like 10 years ago even where you wouldn't have seen that many people complaining about something. You wouldn't even know about it until it was like, oh, that was an issue. I had no clue. Like, there are so many figures that I, you know, find out later on. I know, like, NECA had a bit of a... They had a bit of a um, reputation at one point with some of the Predator figures and some of the Aliens figures. We're talking, like, a while ago now. Um, but the, it took a while for me to realise that, oh, there are QC issues here. I didn't even realise that, because my Predator figures... I 
display them and they were cool and they look great. And then I'd find out later that, oh, does yours have this issue with break it easily, easily broken elbows or something? And I'd be like, no. But then like, this is the other thing as well. I know it's not, it's not ex like necessarily, um, you know, one of those things where it's like, if you take a figure out of the package or if you, the way that you like use a figure straight out of the package, right? The, if I'm very careful in general, I always have been, I'll take it out. I'm very careful with it. I'll move things like individually. And I won't like, if I feel any resistance, it's getting heat on it. 100%. And that's after conditioning. That's after so many, and I haven't even broken many things. Like I don't have many things that have broken out of the box. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, certainly not with classified, but in general, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I have gotten in like, you know, in modern era and it's broken out of the box. I've had packaging issues. I remember um, back in the day when the club uh, had changed the glue they were using to, uh, you know, to affix the bubble on the card. And I remember I would get so many FSS figures or um, member incentives, or like whatever they were, not member incentives because they weren't on card, but like, you know, carded figures, like FSS figures. And I would open them up and lo and behold, that through the like the, you know, the the travel, either the air travel or wh whatever travel it had gone through, um, when I got them in hand, uh, they, the bubble had completely just slid off the card. So it was, they were two separate things. And, the, you know, loads of stuff like that. And, and often things like the packaging bubble kind of being warped and stuff like that, those kind of issues. I can't think of a time where I've taken a figure out and it's broken straight out of the box. I've never done it on an unboxing video. I've never experienced that with Classified to this point. Um, I, I really can't think of anything. Because when I take stuff out, I genuinely have to, like, I just feel really... I want it to be perfect. I don't want to have a breakage and then go through that kind of issue. So, um, you, and, and then there's physics. And I've seen people, I've seen this, and I'm and it, and it kind of makes me go, well, what do you expect? I've seen people take figures out of the box on video as well and just yank the, the joints, like, like almost like try and immediately pull the leg or the knee, like, you know, try and like, you know, get that leg right up against the butt. And I think... <laughs> what do you expect? You're talking about torsion. You're talking about physics on what could be a stiff joint. And stiff doesn't mean quality control has failed. Stiff just means that the the that it's like, you know, it's it, it, if it's fused, that's a different question. But if it's stiff, it's not a problem. You just like apply a pit of heat. And you could do that with a bowl of hot warm water, or you could do it with a hairdryer. I prefer a hairdryer. Just like five or six inches away, just you know, 20 seconds burst, 15, 20 seconds, and then give it a, a little bit of a, a move, nothing, okay, a bit more heat, boop, and it moves, it's perfect. Like a, a, my Serpentor had the stiffest knees in human history, human history. And um, that was like, you know, that, that took a, about 15, <laughs> that took a lot of heat. I hear you, Chris, but the entire wave two of GI Joe didn't have proper face paint, and the response was too bad. We can't fix it, uh, right, Sean? Well, let's let's break that down. They didn't want that to happen. They were they were expecting, based on the uh, production samples, that they were going to be painted, and for some reason, the factory didn't do it. It was it was a massive kind of issue with that that situation, and the the, the issue was the figures are all out now. We can't afford to do this and fix that, or for whatever reason it may be. Um, fair enough that it's not good enough for a $55 figure. I get that, Sean. But then, you know, you can then go, okay, that's a mistake. They've learned from it, and they don't do that anymore. But again, it wasn't an, it wasn't something they did on purpose. And again, at that stage, they couldn't really deal with it. And I think what you saw with Brian was the frustration of having to deal with angry comments left, right, and center. Um, again, like, I, I don't think he, you know, I think he said, oh, this is the situation and we can't really do anything about it. You know, that's just it. And like, uh, whether he can go into details about that or not, I mean, that's up to you. If you're like, if you're, um, you know, like upset about that and you don't want to support the line anymore because of that, then fair enough. But I'm just saying that like these things happen, mistakes are made. And I would also kind of say that, you know, when I look at that Flint figure, I don't, 
I don't have an issue with it. Like, I don't see, I guess, like, I know what you're saying about the price point. I totally understand what you're saying, but I don't know. I, I, I just feel like what what can what else can you do if you can't afford to do that because i mean that is running an entire an entire run of figures again it's like it's no easy feat i mean uh, and again they had done what they thought was the right thing in in ex, in expecting the fact they were going to be painted um but you know these things happen um do we used to have these problems though? I didn't buy much from 2010 to 2020, but I cannot remember ever having to heat or boil a figure until the past few years. No, that's not true, Michael. Um, there have been many figures in the past, modern four inch, um, like that I can remember needed heat, 100%. Um, four inch figures, all that kind of good stuff. And as well, like, you know, it, the, the more you want better articulate, if you want better articulation, sometimes other things are sacrificed so you could be on a you could have a point there in that were there as many problems i don't know maybe not but were there as it was was the figure as complex absolutely not i feel like you know in wanting better articulation you have to and like you know you know pinless and all this kind of stuff that we that we want and we want to see now all these different things that we want improvements on other things get sacrificed. And unfortunately, I'm not saying that breakage is the sacrifice. I'm saying that physics is the problem. And you're ending up with thinner, smaller kind of connecting joints. The way that the articulation works, you've got these like thin pins and discs that kind of, you know, like in elbows and stuff like that. So you have those kind of issues. I mean, this, I, I also kind of feel it's like a, it feels like, um, it feels like an ever developing a sort of evolving industry as well like the 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 kind of um technology and all of that you know kind of like how the decos applied how the uh faces get applied that kind of stuff you know and then things like articulation and how that develops and changes and tries to get you've got to get this balance of like cuts everywhere or do you want it like looking like very much like a real figure like how there's, there's a balance somewhere and i think i just don't think anyone's got it right i don't think anyone's got it perfectly right i think there are great figure lines and i think that i'll put it this way i think that super seven do a really good job with um you know with 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 uh ultimates and reaction and hopefully with with o-ring i i really like what they put out i like the figures i've had them in hand like i said i have many um and i really thought i think they're great but some people won't have that same opinion. And I totally, totally get that. And I totally get that if you um, if you have that feeling towards how the unpainted faces were dealt with, I totally understand that. As I also put, it didn't bother me. So I wasn't that, that fussed. Um, so that's why I don't have the same opinion in that sense, Sean. But I get it. I understand. And I, I'm not saying that you're wrong for thinking that at all. Um, you can think that. I'm just saying from my point of view, that didn't bother me. And um, I, th I think it, like a lot of these things I do think are taken out of, you know, they, they get blown up is what I, what I would say. And they also like used as a stick to beat people with. And I don't know. I just, I feel like it gets to the point where when you're hearing so much negativity all the time that has an effect as well the, the, we're only dealing with human beings at the end of the day it's not like all of this negative kind of like aggressive sort of like angst and and comments and internet forums and all that kind of stuff it's not like any of that is being just you know just water off a duck's back like i get blooming upset when someone puts a comment in there that's like you know either either aggressive towards me or like has some sort of thing has some sort of issue towards me as an individual where it's like what have i done to deserve that do you know what i mean like what have i have i said something to like upset you because i've never met you or i've never you don't know me other than watching these videos and as i've said before i am the most vanilla beige switzerland mf -er on the internet you will not find someone less against like you know, negativity, toxicity, um, and not even like crazy positive all the time. Like I've just been talking at like at length about this situation. It's not positive. 
And I'm not even trying to put a positive spin on it. It's just like I'm discussing it. So it's like in, in terms of like a, you know, like a channel, again, beige as they come. We ain't we ain't clickbait. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like putting stuff out there to have you guys be like, oh, what? And then get angry and have a go. Like, I couldn't be any more Switzerland. So I get really like, genuinely get really uh, pistachio. I like that, Will. Yeah, Will. I like that, mate. Will Robbie with an absolute classic. I'm more pistachio. <laughs> that is actually quite funny. Is that is that because I... I'm, loads of people don't like me. <laughs> is that what you're trying to say? It's like more people don't like me than do like me. Is that what you're saying, Will? I I'll take that. I'll take that hit. Um, uh... <laughs> Speaking of vanilla, a woman once scolded me for getting vanilla ice cream at a shop because it's not a flavor. What says Parsifari? That's quite funny. What was the news item again? I, RKW, indeed. Yeah. Um, anyway, so. Super so we'll move on, but effectively that's I mean that's all I think that's all that needs to be said on my part. I yeah, don't read into it, just surrender to it. <laughs> all right, I'm pistachio, fine. Um I thought I was more like salted caramel. I don't know. I'm cool with I'm cool with pistachio, that's fine. Um yeah, okay. Um right, well that's super seven. Like I said, we've got a uh, cancelled wave and we've got um and we've got the this wave shipping as well. So uh, another obviously wave to come around the corner, and uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens with those as well. I mean, we'll probably get more information about how these figures are for like most people, and then um, yeah, and then we'll see what the next wave brings us. But anyway, there you go. Uh, next up then, and this was probably in like the the well, you know, pre-orders news, isn't it? Basically. <laughs> Yes, shortly after we went live with the weekly on last week, um, well, shortly after, it was like hours later, of course, uh, we had uh, WonderCon. And during WonderCon, the Hasbro peeps of Emily, Ryan, Priya, and BMAC, I remembered, um, <laughs> representing the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, basically, wasn't it? It was the uh, G.I. Joe, Star Wars, Marvel, and... Uh... Transformers. How have I forgotten that? <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, yeah, so obviously Emily was uh, repping, actually, Emily was repping Ghostbusters and G.I. Joe, and uh, Priya was there for Star Wars, Ryan was doing Marvel, of course, and a BMAC for Transformers. Now, during the WonderCon panel, we did get a little rushed G.I. Joe segment right at the end, which still upset me. I was kind of like, oh, why? Why was it, like, so, like, palmed off? But um, obviously, with those reveals, we got the retro uh, figures, and we got um, <laughs> don't forget clapping guy. Yes, Diana, that was annoying, uh, and of course the ferret um, as well. And those pre-orders went live on the fourth of April in the week. And uh, yeah, again, some exciting points to discuss. Obviously, I did a news burst of this, of course, already. But um, hell, you know, you guys don't mind double the content, do you? About the same thing each time. I hope not. Um, because that's what you're getting. You're just getting it with a different uh display, you're just getting it with different colors around it. Hilarious, right? Like loads of people drop off now because I've already watched this episode. Um, anyway, it did feel rushed, didn't it, Detective Dirty? I felt a bit sad about that, but we got some cool stuff. Anyway, then the pre-orders happened and the vamp popped out of nowhere and was like, Oh, hey, I'm back for a short guess who's back in the MF in house. Um, and you know, lo and behold, sold out after a. I want to say it was like 12 or 13 minutes, but that's like enough time to get in there. That's enough because I mean, we posted that quite early on, knowing when it when we knew it was live. <clears throat> so I think there was enough time to get in there and get one because I, I checked back three times to see if it was still in stock, and it was. And then the fourth time I checked, it was about quarter past, maybe about 20 past. Uh, the hour and it had already sold out but you know it, it's a popular vehicle and i wouldn't be surprised if they get another few if there's another little phase of uh vamps that uh that go out for you know that that situation anyway um it almost felt like classified backed away in order to give the other brands more limelight says Stygian. actually that's you know like i, I possibly 
get let it breathe a little bit almost um because we did have things to sh to talk about um and I, I would have been i mean again it would have been nice to have um it would have been nice to have let's say like um uh lenny emily tony you know there doing like an actual panel specifically for gi joe but obviously they were testing the, the waters with wondercon i think it went really well there was a really good turnout uh, if you see, go and go. You can go and check Emily on Instagram and on her um, Morphin Emily, Emily, and on her Instagram page, she's got a video showing the crowd as they're all kind of cheering and clapping, and there's a lot of people there. Um, we we believe clapping guy might be uh, Black Genghis from uh, AT, uh, a, a, a toy kind of mood, but I think he was joking. If not, hilarious. If but I think he was joking. I don't think it was him. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, so the vamp pops up, and I don't worry, I think we're probably going to get this again. But anyway, WonderCon, brilliant. And then after that, pre orders, vamp shows up, uh, which was great, I thought. Um, and did anyone, I, and I did ask this question last time, and I, I saw that a few people had gotten in on the second bout of vamps, uh, which was good, because I know, again, like it's one of those ones that you kind of want to make sure you get hold of. Um, my one is safe and secure in the United Kingdom, and it won't be shipping because it's a bloody huge thing. So next time I'm out in the UK is when I get to enjoy the vamp. Isn't that sad? Um, but, you know, that, I, I, it, it is what it is. Um, anyway, that's the vamp. Then, of course, we had retro beachhead, retro eels, retro snow serpent as well. So we'll have a look at those. Um, got way more images uh, as well. Some of that classic one on the left, which is his uh, card art pose. I love that they can get that figure in that pose. Uh, the only thing with this beachhead for me is the fact that he's got this random green gun. I find it so funny that he's got a random green gun. Uh, it was KJ, was it? That's amazing. Okay, it was KJ then, who was uh, being an absolute crazy hurt human in the uh, in the um, in the WonderCon panel. Um, but anyway, yes, this beachhead. I think this beachhead is phenomenal. I, I can't wait to have this beachhead, and I, that's coming from a fan of. Cobra Island beachhead because I really do like this figure as well but I am very excited for that kind of like I mean effectively like you 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 scaled up uh from the vintage figure um beachhead and uh, it's funny that the again like the you know the magazine matches the the mag the the magazines on his uh chest like that gray but the the green on the gun it's just like why uh, just make the gun and the and the crossbow gray. I think people would have been totally fine with that. Make the crossbow black so it it you know it, it disappears into the backpack, much like the uh, original. I don't know, maybe. Um, yeah, I know the the crossbow is that color, but they could have done both of them the same color gray. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't really get that. Uh, there must be a reason for that. There must be a specific logistical nightmare of a reason for that. And I, um, I, I'm going to have to ask. I'm going to ask that question, I'm like, guys. Why is Beachhead's rifle green? Um, anyway, I, I, again, I just—it's a funny question. I think they'll probably won't be able to answer anyway. But we'll see what they say. I've, oh, um, I should be. I will be speaking to Emily, Lenny, and Tony very, very soon. Um, but at the moment, it's. It's a busy week for me at work, and it's a busy week for them. So um, we're trying to like line it up at the moment, and we will do. Trust me, it will happen. Um, didn't Firefly version two come with the grey version when it should have been this green version? Switch them, switch them around. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe that's what they've done. Maybe that's what they've done it for. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway, it's it's irrelevant now. I, who Matt, who cares at the end of the day? It's Beachhead. He looks great. It's a great figure. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, this one is going to be a fave of mine. I do like Beachhead in general. Um, and so like I'm, I'm, I'm more the merrier. And in actual fact, Tiger Force this one up as well, please. Yeah, give us a Tiger Force Beachhead and I'll be all over that. Diet, indeed, past the pierogi. It's an easy one to fix, isn't it? Um, there he is. There he is again. Whee! And that's his that's his bum, if you were interested. Uh, and then, of course, the carded figure as well. Now, I've, I talked at length about the cards 
I don't think I need to really. I'll, I'll I'll briefly go over it for those that for the back that missed this information. All my personal opinion is what they missed, and I you know it doesn't matter at the end of the day. But the white border, the fact that there isn't one, really bothers me, and it still bothers me that they haven't added it since they did it to the Cobra Commander one. I'm like, continue that, please. So very surprised that they haven't done that. I don't mind the artwork either. Like it's new artwork. It's similar poses. It doesn't evoke the same Greedo or Norum or Heart sort of vibes for me. But if it's going to be different, it's fine for me to be this way. And I'm cool with that. I think they look cool. Uh, but I still think the border, more than anything, is really necessary here. And it's funny that they didn't use or don't use the original artwork. I mean, for a lot of it, uh, you know, they didn't really curate the original artwork uh, carefully enough, in my opinion. I think Hasbro really dropped the ball there back in the 80s and 90s. And even though they've tried to keep thinking... Um, for anyone that thinks Chris always 100% defends Hasbro, observe, he just took them to task for a gun colour and a strip of white around the card. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, I don't know why... I mean, yeah, I understand I have a reputation for being friggin' positive and happy about things, but my goodness, the amount of crap I get for that, it feels weird. It does. It feels a little bit like maybe I'm not the problem here. Um, but uh, I'm... Who cares in the, the day? I'm I'm trying to like ignore some of the some of the weird aggressive crap that I don't really feel like I deserve, but you know, who does at the end of the day? Um anyway, like yeah, so the white border, that would have done it for me. Um I'd have been happy with that, totally. Um Chris, time to turn heel, no one will see it coming. That's so funny. Um, full force merch idea, black shirt, white te text, got border. I like that. That's a great idea. Um, yeah. And then like, yeah, it's, that's actually quite funny. That is actually quite funny. Um, isn't Tiger Force Beachhead just wreckage or Sabretooth? No, that's, um, Firefly. Uh, Beachhead is a Tiger Force figure from, uh, the, what, that sick, that, was it a true exclusive pack? Let me let me just clarify that, Jamie Lynn. I can't rem I can't remember off the top of my head. Beachhead. Do 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 ba, do do. I believe it was two thousand and four version eight, and it was a. Oh no, it was a convention, wasn't it? It was the 40 Years of Adventure in Orlando, Florida. The 2004 G.I. Joe convention set, uh, Beach had got Tiger Forced up. Oh, he did get Tiger Forced before that, didn't he? Didn't he get like um, a new era, uh, modern, uh, new sculpt era Tiger Force? Or am I just making that up? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I think I just made that up. I'm thinking of those two packs that did Tiger Force sort of characters that sort of were Tiger Force. But. Um, yeah, it was a concept, 2004 concept, um, Beachhead. And like, it's it's fun because it's like, you know, brown pants and then you kind of green secondary and then just tiger stripe orange everywhere else. I would be down for that. I'd be super down for that. I think that's 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 a wicked deco and, and fun as hell. I um, actually, what figure was it that I try to I tried to do a Tiger Force Beachhead modern era kind of custom years ago. You do you remember the Rise of Cobra gunship, the kind of Cobra gunship, that kind of futuristic thing that the start at the start kind of just takes out the helicopters. Uh you may have wiped it from your mind. But the the pilot for that, I want to say was like a was it like Firefly or something? Something weird like that. And that that figure that came with that, I ended up trying to do or started customizing a tiger force beachhead with it i'm gonna write gunship here see what happens cobra gunship yeah here we go it, yeah it was firefly version 19 so yeah that firefly i basically repainted um and did it with the um with the idea that i was going to do um <laughs> that um, Tiger Force Beachhead with that figure. So uh, I don't think I ever finished it, though. I remember painting it orange on the top, 
doing the pounce pants brown and i even started doing a tiger force deco on the uh gunship tiger the cobra gunship um <laughs> so, someone said jesus was that kate stomping yeah she was just walking across the uh above me that was all it was um Carl says he missed the vamp again. Oh, mate, I'm sorry. Well, again, don't worry. I think it will probably happen again. It's just one of those things that when whenever there's a pre-order, or keep an eye on your emails as well um, for like that kind of back-in-stock email that has Repulse love to do, um, because you'll probably find that they'll it'll pop up again at some point in the future. Nightforce Beachhead had the grid pattern. Oh, yes. A Nightforce, yes. Nightforce Beachhead would be cool as well. So this is one that you could definitely do multiple type, multiple ways. You can do them in Nightforce. You can do them in Tiger Force. And th that's, you know, plenty for me. Um, yeah, but that's that's great. Before you start getting into different versions of Beachhead, obviously, um, different designs and what have you. Um, but yeah, they ever do a sci-fi Tiger Force? No, but that sounds Freaking phenomenal! That sounds like something uh, Black Major or Red Laser would do, uh, as like a kind of custom sort of, uh, you know, you know, custom, you know what I mean? Like kind of like one of those releases, bootlegs, third party. I don't even know what you what you call them. Um, Uh, X Factor Seventeen says, "Because I'm catching up, I'd like to say that I've purchased multiple Ultimates lines since they began with Moto and QC. Issues have persisted since the beginning. My biggest issue has been the price. Um, totally fair point, dude. And I wasn't going to just ignore that comment, by the way, either. Um, Jeremy, I have to wish him happy birthday here too. I tried singing happy birthday to him yesterday, but you almost hung up on me. Um, oh, is is it Darren's birthday? Did someone say?" Oh, Airborne Custody, it is. Happy birthday, Darren. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Darren. Happy birthday to you. That'll be clipped up. Um, Sonic Fighters Beachhead, please, says Jeremy. Um, you, yeah. <laughs> Was the what? No. Um, okay, fine. We'll do it. Um, Hasbro emailed me saying that Rakondo is shipped, even though they sent it to me two weeks ago. I did. I did have that uh, with a Hasbro email. I got some figures through the through the mail, and then yeah, it was a number. It was probably about half a week later, maybe a couple, maybe four or five days, I'd say. And I got an email saying, "Oh, you just shipped." I'm like, uh, "Huh? What?" But no, it was the they just it was just delayed, I guess, or accidental. Um I just got email for Duke and Scarlet says just done the Anderson. Brilliant. Um yesterday was, says Airborne Car. Okay, well, happy birthday from for yesterday, Darren. Uh bootlegs, if their legality is questionable and third party is basically if they do their own original thing, and well, then there's companies that do both. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, so it is it's technically bootlegs, isn't it? Um, this is the best, says George. What for singing happy birthday? Badly. Um, okay, there's Beachhead. Uh, then we've got the Snow Serpent. And again, major po main points being, and I'll talk about the cross sell on the next card, so I've spread it out a little bit. Um, my main points on this one, obviously, the same as everybody's. The figure, phenomenal, absolutely gorgeous, looks great, great deco, very Sunbow esque, that kind of like stark white with the blue, more so actually than the figure, which was like a almost like a grey color, wasn't it? In fact, the Deluxe is closer to the original figure for the for the base, and this is closer to the original figure for the the web gear color. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, oh, benefit of that song being in the Creative Commons now. Yeah, I won't get a copyright strike or whatever. Um, yeah. So the the only issue with this particular figure, uh, in my opinion, is that lack of retro accessories, and I think that that is a general consensus across, I would say, almost the entire fandom. I haven't seen anyone sort of say, I'm cool with it. They've bought them, obviously. I know that people are buying them still for army building purposes. And and absolutely, it's a great figure. But what I'm saying is, yeah, I think the general consensus is that the everybody is kind of a bit bent out of shape that there's no AK, mortar, backpack, and snowshoes accessories, which when you kind of put it like that, does sound like a lot of extra things to tool. But 
I think it would have been worth it. And I think they would have sold, I think they would have sold even more of the, I think this would have been sold out with retro accessories. What do you agree with me? Because I, I agree with me <laughs> this, I mean, they probably will sell out anyway, but it would have been quick and they'd have been redoing these, I think in a similar way to the eels, uh, eels up inside. Yeah. Fine. And an entrance where they can, I don't definitely think that the snow serpents would have gone ballistic with those retro accessories because it does put like a bit of a break on it. You do kind of go like, I'm just going to get it. So I complete, you know, so I have it. And I think, I think if they, if you throw the retro accessories in here, they go, gangbusters with the with the sales on this one so that's that's one that i would i would have maybe sort of suggested yes you've got to kind of stick to sort of like a budget and all that kind of stuff i get that i think in some cases you could probably see what's going to happen in some cases not in every case certainly not in every case sometimes things take you by surprise and um i would say the eel definitely took me by surprise in its popularity i didn't expect it, yeah, episode 172 the musical um i didn't expect it to go as ballistic as it did when it was on Amazon. Um, but I really do feel, and again, like I look at the figure and I think, you know, the backpack on, the, the rifle in hand, it looks cool. It doesn't look like it's necessarily like, you know, missing something, but I think we all know that, yeah, it does miss something. Um, I Ryan says, oh, cool. Okay. I will be the lone dissenting voice. I like this gun for the snow serpent. I don't care what the snowshoes look like, and I never use the mortar. I'm fine with this. That again, I think I'm 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 in a sort of like in-between mode with you there, Ryan, right? I I think I'd have been perfectly fine with Dusty's backpack repainted, a la that one, um, an AK-47, and maybe that's that's cool with me. Like, I, I don't think the snowshoes would have been necessarily important. I think it would have been cool and it would have been retro and it would definitely would have invoked the original figure, but I don't think it would have been a, it wouldn't have been a make or break for me. Um, but I think just the rifle alone would have done enough for me to be like, okay, that's cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't necessarily need the mortar thing or whatever, it's like a missile on a stick, but I don't know. If they'd have done it, I'd have been all over it. I'd have been, oh, they've done it. This is so cool. This is great. You know, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, the term retro insinuates like the OG. Totally agree with you on that one, Rachel. I totally agree with you. Yeah, you'd think that they would be doing it as close to the original as possible. And um, yeah, but again, I think like I, I've been saying, it's a weird one. Um, it's such a good figure in general. And I think if they'd have just given them, an, and again, like a lot of people probably be like, it's not really about the rifle. It's more about the snowshoes or it's more about, you know, that kind of thing. And that's fine as well. Like, you know, I, I kind of feel like if the snowshoes had just been tennis rackets, they probably would have gotten away with it. If something in there had been like the vintage figure, would have been cool. But no, every accessory is sort of completely different. Um, but I would imagine what, gridiron? I'm just saying it. Have they probably got a loadout for this? You know, like you'd probably be able to find things like that if you if you really want to kit your snow serpent out in what you know you think they should look like, then then totally. Michael Jean Fleming still bought two, exactly. Um Jeremy says this been fine as a mainline standard snow serpent, but being retro is the problem. Yeah, I think that's a good point, actually. I think that's a very good point. Yeah, if it had just been like in a standard four-figure wave, I think people would have just been like, eh. Um I wish they would take the reserve parachute off the snow serpent and give him a pouch to warm his hands. Uh, there's Airborne Customs again, trying to force the realism into G.I. Joe. It's not going to happen, Darren, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, Chris, I love your positivity approach, brother. It's the reason I love the full force family we have here. Thank you for all your effort. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you, X Factor 17. I appreciate that as well. And again, I am not against having uh debates or chats or anything like that about certain things as long as it doesn't get you know nasty that and it never is with uh you know in that in that sense mike delta sierra thank you so much for the super chat uh there's nothing in there but i very much appreciate it my mike delta sierra if you actually want if you wanted to make a comment and you want it read out 
just post it again, not as a super, don't have to give us any more money. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. If you didn't want to, obviously, if there wasn't a comment in there and it wasn't an error on uh, YouTube's part, then that's totally fine as well. But thank you so much. We really appreciate the super chats. That's really, really kind of you. Um, uh, Tor says, you know, guess what? It's the end goal with the retro versions, the colors, the accessories, the car back, et cetera. Don't get me wrong. Some nice figures, but also some odd choices. I agree. Um, I, I, think, I think the card alone could be done in a, a very simple fixes, could make it very much 100% a retro vintage kind of vibe more than what is kind of being done at the moment visually from an aesthetic point of view it's very simple um touches do you know what i mean like literally like um the 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 uh, border is is i just think is a, it really does make a difference graphically visually aesthetically it makes a difference um but yeah, I, I I feel I get what you're saying as well. Like there's some odd decisions going on with those. I'm actually just gonna I'm gonna look at the because there's a snow suit. again. The snow suit looks phenomenal, and I love the deco. I'm not. I think that's that's kind of what we expected, but we also expected those retro accessories. Now, in terms of the the back of the card is what I'll get at here. I feel like that is something that could definitely be improved. They've sort of filled that space awkwardly under the, the file card with just three figures but there are what do we count like 15 in the line so far come on let's get let's get 5 10 15 in there let's minimize that um file card <laughs> you know i think the file card's taking up more space than it needs to minimize some of that text as well none of that legal gump needs to be that large in my opinion um just like yeah, just like minimize all that that gumph, minimize the file card, get it down the bottom, and then put the cross cell at the top and make it those fifteen figures that are out already. Um, I maybe they're waiting actually, maybe they're waiting until they can fill a space with smaller cross cell and have like much many more figures to put on the back. But I I I genuinely think that cross cell could be cooler and to have that but card back. Where all of the figures are the, are in the line so far in the retro series on the back, you know you could like cross it off like you know like in the old days. Um, can we put file card in quotes? Sorry, yeah, file card. There you go. Um, I'm sorry, I missed some comments. Apologies. Um, oh, uh, one eyed biker says, "I remember how much excitement we had with Glenda coming with Flash's weapons." That's another good point. Yeah. I think they missed an opportunity with the snow serpent not coming with short fuses mortar. That's a good. That's actually not a bad shout. Um, like like a you know like giving us a little Easter egg kind of pre-use sort of thing as well. Yeah, that's that's a, a quite an interesting point actually. I quite like that as an idea. It just makes it more depressing that we didn't get that. But <laughs> um, Toxo Viper Free Zone, yeah. Uh, saw this the Cobra Commander from his tank from the his tank has lab and it has a white border even uh, separate bubbles for accessories so just odd they are capable of better yeah I I don't I wonder if it's like if it is a um, a cheaper thing for them to produce and that's where they sacrifice in the budget to create like the all of Beachhead or all of Duke or all of Scarlet do you know what I mean like I've, maybe that's slightly where they're saving the money in order to be able to give us like full figures of, of kind of newness. Um, the back of the card is broken, needs fixing for sure. Yeah, I kind of agree with that, Jedi Ben. Um, uh, Airborne Custom says, yes, we all need the previous retro figures and the silhouettes of the upcoming figures on the back. I think that'd be so much fun. And even if it's not the silhouette, which again, I've made up in my head from the vintage era, I think it just says coming soon on the vintage cross cells. And then they use silhouettes later on, didn't they, in like the modern era uh, and on other toy lines. But I think that'd be kind of fun. Not if they did the silhouette, because that would give it away and everyone would know what was coming. Like we're all, we all know what we're dealing with there. It would be like, here are the silhouettes, guys. Now we've got to trawl through all of the card art to see what figures are coming. Um, so uh, it would be fun, don't get me wrong, but I think that coming soon thing would be pretty neat as well. Uh, and if it had like some sort of clue in the name underneath it, like, like a, I don't know, um, uh, infantry or like um, medic or, you know, things like that, 
would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Um, I know it would probably still give things away massively, but um, it would be kind of cute if they played up on that a little bit every now and again. Um, oh, the yes, the car stock is much better. And that is something they've improved massively. And yeah, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and just gr groan about some things that haven't been fixed uh, and not talk about the things that have definitely been dealt with. And the, the card stock being thicker, stronger, that is brilliant. Um, they should have silhouettes on the next three retros to generate mystery and anticipation. I agree. Can they just get rid of the file card? I don't think anyone likes those, uh, says Jeffrey. Yeah, I, I, it's, uh, I don't, yeah. I, I just think, yeah, make it tiny then. If you can. <laughs> but like, it does seem, and again, it's to, you know, it's to keep it, keep the costs down because you can use this card now across multiple, um, you know, territories, should we say. I will say again that the new cards... Yep. Yeah. Snow Serpent and Eel are 100% reuse. They should be in a Dollar General classified line. That'd be kind of fun, actually. They should delete just the French text to make more space for English. <laughs> Harsh. Uh, the new cards are great, and their availability everywhere is amazing. Uh, good point. Retro Big Ben coming, I can feel it, says Detective Dirty. I missed the file card, says Chris. We have 27 total confirmed retros via leak listings through 2025. Absolutely. But they're not going to put... They're not going to put 27, uh, you know, they're going to put like half of them with just all silhouettes. That'd be mental, wouldn't it? It's like the whole line plan of retro on the back of the cross cell. I wish the entire line would go with the cards instead of the boxes now. <laughs> you, you prefer the cards. That's even, that's even funnier. Um, Stephen B got both 60th, was going to pass. Glad I did great figures. Maybe the best, but debatable. I use Recon Diver as Night Force Recondo. Uh, Redondo? Night Force Torpedo and Soldier Dusty Version 2. I, yeah, unless you mean Redondo, in which case I don't know what you're talking about. I was checking randomly, Retro Classified Lady J and Back had four figure slots and had Destro as a silhouette. Yes, yes. I, yeah, you're right. That did happen, didn't it? Um, Maybe the thicker cards got the rockets costed out. Ra the rackets costed out. Yes, Pazbury. Sorry, I, I read it as rockets, but I'm... Rocket and rackets, technically. Um, Airborne says, yeah, but that's the point of the silhouettes. 25th anniversary did it before they revealed all the waves. It would help drive up hype and excitement for the upcoming waves. I, I totally agree. Totally agree. I just want to know when a true retro eels is coming because this isn't it. I probably, I don't think we will. Get, I think this is the only retro eels we're going to get. Unless there's a lot of, you know, anger surrounding it and we get the, the accessories somehow in the future um they are the packages are less material than the box versions actually m price you, you've got a point there so it would be you know probably more sustainable i love how the art replicates the figure's trigger finger while holding the barrel of the rifle <laughs> they've got to they've got to make it exactly as the figure you're getting now they're very worried about that it would appear too bad they can't put multiple double-sided file cards in the boxes with a different language on each side. They did use silhouettes for Armatech on the 93 catalogue. Just double-check check that. Yes, I think you're right, Michael. They did. On the plus side, ironically, the retro classified are more consistent com uh, compared box, no window, windowless window shenanigans. True. The lack of true retro beyond what they did with Gung Ho concerns me. Just feels like double dipping. Yeah, but you, you, you're missing Duke, Scarlet, Cobra Commander. Gung Ho, Snake Eyes. There's five true retro um, right there, and Beachhead. So th they're they're definitely doing true retro. Um, you can kind of sack off a lot of the first phase of retro, can't you? I mean, if I'm adding Snake Eyes and Gung Ho, then obviously you can't. But you can look at that first phase as they were they were doing it, but they weren't doing it with their full sort of. Um, what do you call it? They weren't doing it with their like, with the, their full attention. It wasn't really getting what it needed to get. It was a little bit sort of like an afterthought, I, I, I would say. And when you get like Cobra Commander in the HasLab, it changed, and it's like, okay, well now, now there's there's a focus. They're making it a line. It's going to have a regular occurrence. It's going to like, it's going to be three figures a wave, and it's going to like inc increase the uh, the line plan and all that kind of stuff. So. Now we're looking at it again, like you know, maybe that you know, the first wave had two 
completely new. And obviously, Rakondo ticked a box for a lot of people. So that made sense. Um, Beachhead makes sense. Eels as a reissue kind of makes sense based on you're not going to, people couldn't get it anywhere else at that point and wanted more of them. And it was super popular. Snow Serpent for me is the only real failure at the moment because of the retro accessories. But I still think that isn't a bad re return. It's not a bad return in my opinion. And I think that the next, you know, the next three will probably have more of that retro inspired um, kind of situation. I think it will build and make sense. And, you know, maybe the, maybe the, the way following that will have all new and maybe the way following that will have three reuses. Do you know what I mean? Like it, we'll see how it goes, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't like kind of, you know, get too concerned about it based on what is effectively, you know, just the snow serpent really kind of uh, tripping up, tripping everything up. Uh, would love to see flag points again. Collect enough and get a pack of figure stands or load of weapons. Johnny B54, that's not a bad idea. The kind of mail away angle for things that people have been talking about, like, yeah, your figure stands and what have you. I'm going to move through eel, eels up inside you. Um, Tor, I don't get, can't they just make more normal eels? Well, it's an Amazon exclusive. So it's it's contractually agreed beforehand how many are going to be made and the process it's going to go through and all that kind of, that's not in there. They can't change that once it's been um, checked and done and all that kind of stuff. At the very least, they can maybe do another run of them, but they've done that by the sounds of things because they kept coming back and, and they'd come in stock very short period of time and they'd get rinsed again. So they have done that, but they're at that point now where Amazon probably don't want to do that for whatever reason and or it's like the end of that particular contractual obligation it's different when you're dealing with it's completely different when you're dealing with a, a store exclusive it's a separate negotiation almost um between two companies whereas getting it out on a retro card means it's available in more places and it's um readily like one of those things where Hasbro can you know rerun it when they want to do so like it's slightly different when it comes to store exclusives there's a lot more red tape involved it's not something they can just switch on and off um and I'll, I'll speak to them about it as well and see if they can comment on that kind of stuff they probably can do uh, so we'll, we'll kind of get that confirmed but that's that's the situation as far as I understand it um Shrink the file card down to the original proportions and make room for flag points. Definitely. That'd be so much fun, Ben. Um, Plastic Belt says, I don't know how the eels get more retro other than the backpack and harpoon, which you can get from Mark III Mark II design, I believe. Yeah, like I think the um I think the eels, you're right. It would just be like a very like on the nose design backpack with that kind of like kind of like triangular piece at the top, or like kind of like the kind of it's like it's like a little separate cylinder sort of thing with a little kind of point on it, isn't it? And then yeah, make it very much like the the vintage one. And then the harpoon would be like yeah, identical. That's that's what you I think what people would want to see. But I don't. I, yeah, I kind of look at it and I don't really think it's necessary. Like it's one of those ones that kind of I don't think it's like a. I don't think I don't look at it and think that's not an eel <laughs> because it doesn't have its retro gear. I kind of feel like they've done it pretty close already. But some, if some people want it, then some people want it, you know? Um, oh, okay. Stephen says, cardstock is folded over, making it thicker. That's what makes the white border harder to do. Not sure about that, Stephen, because it is just a visual, um, what do you call it? Like, a, a, you know, on the card, it's like you would just do, I, I see what you're saying. Like, it's like, it's like, a, it's like this, and then they fold it like that to make it, you know, thing. So if you're doing a white border, it would kind of go a bit weird at the top where it's folded over. Is that what you're saying? Because that is um, that is probably a point that I will I will ask them and see if that is the issue. Um, the true retros outweigh the not true retros. Yeah, that's what I was thinking personally. In especially in like again, if you, yeah. I know we have to, if you're taking into consideration Gung Ho and Snake Eyes, then you obviously take into consideration all the other figures in that first phase of retros. But even if you take that entire first phase out and just focus on what's come since Cobra Commander in the HasLab, it's a pretty solid, 
you know, kind of situation. And also, I would say if they're going to, if, if it might be a case that with the card stock thing, it's cheaper to do the fold over scenario rather than two separate pieces stuck together. That might be easier for them to do and cheaper for them to do. I don't know, like, the ins and outs of that, but that might be why they don't do the border. And that is a very good point, and that's making me think about that a lot more now, though. Obviously, if you were doing two stuck together, you could do the white border, no problem on the front. It wouldn't be an issue. But obviously, when you've got that fold over, yeah, that's going to be interesting to kind of work with. Um, I'm really hoping for a retro flint. Would he come with the smirk? Well, I don't know. Probably not. But uh, you get, I'm not, you'd probably get a new head sculpt for him if you were going to do a retro flint. And I love that flint, by the way. I'm really into Flint and Tiger Force Flint. I am, I I will die on that hill. I love Flint, the classified Flint figures. Um, I meant Night Force Torpedo. Okay, Stephen, I thought you might. Um, I blame Walmart. Oh yeah, Walmart. My goodness. Um, you can put me in the not really fussed about the accessories camp, says Jeffrey. That's two. We've got two not really fussed about accessories, which is, which is interesting. I like that. I like I like knowing these things. It's good. Eels, they had to do a retro so soon because of the demand. I don't think Hasbro realized just how popular it would be. I don't think anyone did. I don't think you could, I don't think you could have imagined the eel would be like the top selling troop builder of all time. Um, I'm I'm guessing, by the way, on that one, just based on the the absolute rapidity. That's not a word, uh, just the nature of it disappearing in like seconds. Um but yeah, I I don't think I I don't look at any of these and go yeah that's going to sell more than that i mean some you can so you can see you can see that some that might not sell as much but you definitely look at some of them and go they, they take me by surprise still could you see ripcord being a retro line yes 100 percent, chris 100 percent uh ripcord crazy legs i could see both of them on the retro card not a not a problem Unless they do something like more deluxe with either of those, they could do like working parachutes at some point, and then you could have like a, a kind of deluxe ripcord or a deluxe crazy legs or something. There's a possibility of that. Um, flag points for custom file cards would be dope. Yes, they would. How many 60th do you think we're going to get? Not really sure. We only have rough and ready on the listings for 2024 left. Uh, unless there are some others they've got planned to, to bust out. That's all we know of in 2024, and we know we, we've got at least one more in 2025. But I don't think they're just going to do one every now and again, or you know, I think they'll probably do like maybe four a year. I guess. Um, but knowing that we've only got, I mean, like the Action Soldier and Sailor, was that last year or was that early this year? I can't remember. Like knowing about it, revealing and all that kind of stuff. It was probably last year, wasn't it? So it's weird that it's only been two. A year so far. Um, sorry, I'm not going to get to all the comments. I'm sorry. I'll get to some of them. Chris, what other troop builder do you feel would be as popular as the eel? Probably the um, the red ninja from Ninja Force, but done in the deco of that odd color. I don't know what what have we got left that would be that popular. Um, I mean, you know, there are some really cool. Vipers and stuff, aren't there? There's so many that are really, really cool. But would they be as ridiculously popular as the eel? This guy? I don't know. I just couldn't tell you. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the in the comments because I'm struggling to think of any others that would that would do the numbers that this would. Maybe like a retro trooper that actually looks like a trooper or a retro officer that is very vintage inspired. Um, maybe those would do good numbers. Um, Lady J was a pretty accurate retro. Jamie Lynn, yeah, her definitely her, re her accessories were and the deco. Yeah, so yeah, okay. No, you're right. I, and, and I did love those accessories. Um, so I will have to, I will have to kind of say, yeah, I think I agree with you on that. Re Lady J definitely gets put in that, um, in that kind of camp as a as a very close. Um, yeah, one for the, for retro over over Vin, over the other option. Um, the Coco had a whiteboard. Yes, he did, but I don't know if that was too. I don't know if it was folded or if it was two cards stuck together. They probably had more budget with that one, uh, based on the Haslab thing. Do you think it's possible to get a version two Snake Eyes on the thick card back with the visor, ankle, and wrist straps? Cenobar five. 
sensor bar, sensor bar five. Yes. I I don't see why not. I mean, I, that seems to be something that I think a lot of people have been asking about. Actually, I, I could see them doing um, Snake Eyes version two proper on card with new parts. I could see, and maybe a timber. I could see them doing um, like a Storm Shadow V two. I could see them doing like maybe even a Snake Eyes version three. I could see those kind of uh, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow figures hitting retro cards. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. There are so many comments. Night Viper's a good shout, actually, past the progi. Maybe Night Viper could be, I wouldn't say as popular, but certainly very popular. Um, the Viper, says Paul, I if we didn't have like 30 Vipers already, I'd probably agree with you. But unless it was like, yeah, they changed it to like, be exactly like the original Viper. Maybe. Maybe the Viper. But I think, yeah, the Night Viper would be amazing. Um, um, what else are you guys saying here? There's, I mean, so many comments. Iron Grenadiers. There you go. Chris G. Iron Grenadiers is a good shout. Um, that's that's another one you could probably see moving, because that's a single... That's a standard wave uh, of four figure. So it'll be in more places, you'll be able to get it in like lots of different places. It won't just be the one place to buy it. So that's a bonus. There's going to be more of those from the, from the off. And I could see them selling out no problem. I think Iron Grenadiers is a good shout. Night Viper, Iron Grenadiers, the Viper done completely retro. And maybe like you could throw in the Trooper and the Officer done very, very retro. But it would have to be like the original figure. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, saying? Um, I'm not really worried about the card border. I had to look up the vintage cards because I always cut out the file card and can the rest as 84 rain. Totally, totally fine. And I, I'm not saying that my opinion is the, the opinion of everybody's at all. But I will say that um, just from my personal preference, it's that thing, that visual aesthetic. I feel like when it when it doesn't have that border, it... it ends up looking unfinished is what I think is the problem in my head. And um, like, it doesn't have that like end, that solid end point to be like the framage, the framing of it. And I don't know what that is. It might be some sort of OCD thing. It might be some sort of weird glitch in my head that I have to have and have to see. But you know, if it doesn't bother you, that's great. You know, that's, that's awesome. And I was the same as a kid. I only kept the file cards. Everything else was thrown away, but I regret it. You know, I forget that there was all that beautiful artwork on the front. And like, I, was, I just need the file card for my, you know, to cut and key. Because you're told to cut it out. That's the other thing. I was following orders on the card. Cut out and keep and file for your own records and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Um, but no, totally the same as you, 84 Rain, on that. I would, I did that as a kid. I've got a stack of all, all of the file cards I ever, all the figures I ever had, their file cards. And I have uh, all of the vehicle boxes still, uh, all in full. They're all kind of like, it, they're kind of like Russian doll nested into each other, into inside my mobile command center box. Uh, even the tactical battle platform boxes in there as well. They're all immaculate as well. Like I kept that stuff as a kid, immaculate. I loved it so much, and I genuinely wish I'd been more careful taking the figures off the card, and kept everything. Just kept all of it. I think it would have been so much so cool to keep all that stuff. Um, I was just too excited, you know, like ripping it off the card and everything. Um, anyway, sorry, so many comments and stuff. I'm not going to get to everyone. Sorry, guys. Tor, or T-O-R, thank you so much for the super chat. Again, really appreciate that. That's so much fun. Thank you, guys. And cheers to you as well. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I'm just going to look back because I know I said to Mike, I think it was Mike, um, who gave us a very nice, uh, yeah, Mike Delta Sierra gave us a very awesome um super chat i just want to make sure you haven't commented mike since like if you had a comment to make and it didn't tag on that particular thing um and i can't see anything so i'm just going to assume i'm just going to say thank you very much i very much appreciate the support from all of you guys and thank you so much for the super chats because that is so so awesome uh right eels up inside you finding an entrance where they can um i think that's pretty much it on the retro figures now isn't it uh, yeah, can't see, and I'm just double checking. I'm double checking, right? Uh, right, let's move to that. 
Now, the other thing that was obviously went up for pre-order, uh, as well as the as well as the eels, beachhead, and snow serpent, was the ferret. Um, and this was pretty dope in lots of different lots of different ways. Chris, thanks again for singing happy birthday to me. I didn't injure myself by turning forty, like George said he did. Amazing. Let's call George Greeno out on that one. <laughs> um, yes. So, ferret. Now, there's a couple of there's a lot of points here that I want to kind of talk about because there are things that I think um, after the fact I've uh, I've kind of under, come to understand of the situation with this this vehicle. I don't think it has the turning capabilities, which is fine. Uh, but it's a shame that they didn't do that with the old, you know, with the old what's it job uh, handlebars just to move the wheels. I think that would have been so cool. Um, and obviously, the the I believe the winch is a detail. It's like a molded detail. It's not a. Um, it's not an actual working winch, which, you know, that's fine. It's cool. Like, I don't think it's that much of an issue. But again, it would have been really cool if they'd done that. But again, I get it. And one of the one of the reasons I'm really amazed that they've even done this at this size with this figure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is the price point. How on earth have they kept this to $54.99? Because I looked at those images of the the, the wheelbase for a start is freaking ridiculous. Like, so big, so big, and so wide, and you can fit two figures on it. So straight away, you're looking at, like, your trouble bubble, and you're going, well, it, it dwarfs the trouble bubble. But the trouble bubble does have more deluxe accessories with your Televiper. So that makes sense to me. Like, that's probably what's happening here. They're taking away some of those extra accessories, and they're kind of putting more of that cost into the vehicle itself, and then the figure gets the knife, two pistols, and a helmet. That's I'm totally cool with that. I mean, this is a very specialised figure anyway. It's going to just be driving a ferret all the time. So there you go. Um, but I think that's I think that's what's happened here um, because when I saw this figure, this vehicle, I was like, "There's no, that's going to be 100. That is going to be like 65.99. I can't." And I didn't actually have the price uh, point um, at the time. We, we only had the listing for this. Um, but so like that whole kind of period of time, I was thinking this is going to be 65 easily and then maybe more. So when it came out and it was 54.99, I was genuinely shocked and pleasantly surprised and was like, well, I'm glad about that because now like you can't, there is that thing where when something like that happens, I do kind of cringe because I just know I'm going to be dealing with like loads of comments on posts, loads of like, you know, you know, problems and issues and all that kind of stuff. And it's the biggest problem ever. And it's like the worst thing that's ever happened in life. And I was kind of like just dreading that moment. Uh, and then when it was 54.99, I just, all of that just floated away, all that anxiety. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Brilliant. I'll get one of these. Bosh. Um, so that was, that was the main thing I was really happy about. And, you know, I imagine that's probably why we don't have um, a steering wheel that moves the front wheels and the little cannon at the front and why we don't have a working winch. And it's not really, I mean, it shouldn't be expected, but the fact that the vamp did so many different things feature-wise, you're kind of like, you're causing yourself issues as a company if you go ham on something because you just expect it to go ham every other single time at that point. Um, uh Maybe Hasbro has seen the effects on sales for costs of living increases. I'm sure. I'm sure they, they. Also, I guarantee that you know they're working to the corporate aspect of it as well. Like they don't want us that they want to put these out for cheaper, and they argue that point when they when they put the the line plan together. But when it comes to the actual people that are making those decisions from the financial side of things, they're going to try and probably like stretch it as much as they can, see what they can get. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I feel like that is something that 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 company, all corporations, do, will do that because that's effectively all that drives them. Um, it's sad, but it's the whole, you know, it's the it's the society, it's this that we're living in, it's this situation, it's what it is, capitalism. So they will one hundred percent be like, let's 
see if we can get away with an 89.99 Viper 3 pack or whatever it was. Um, it was too expensive, but whatever that situation was. And they did and they didn't get away with it. So, well, they didn't get away with it. They realized that was too much of a, of a stretch. Plus, that was during a time when the budgetary restrictions were tighter. So maybe there was like a, it was just how it was. Uh, now that isn't necessarily the case. Um, expect a Tiger Paw, indeed. Uh, Shockwave Ram is same price. That makes the Ferret the better deal. Uh, yeah, again, the Shockwave Ram comes with more accessories, but you're right. I feel like that's what I'm saying. Like, you get look at the Trouble Bubble, you look at the Rams, you look at those kind of things, and you look at this, and you go, this probably does deserve to be at the minimum $5 more or $10 more. Do you know what I mean? Like, I look at it and I think that probably does deserve to be in that kind of region. But the fact they haven't. The fact they haven't done that is great. It's like, well, that's good. That 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 benefits us at the end of the day. So I'm I'm not going to complain about that at all. Nothing. Not there's a complaint there. A complaint to be had there. Um, Cobra Island Vipers were reselling at over 150 each when the Viper Three Pack was announced. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, but again, I don't think that should really come into it. Um, it should be a case of like, what is the what what is the actual uh, level what they're dealing with with three figures here like what what are we dealing with and what should the price point be not like what's the secondary market doing on that figure like um but yeah i think people who hadn't got that cobra island viper probably went in for the three pack straight away based on that um but it didn't sell out did it the three pack i don't think it did anyway and it seemed to go through a number of sales. Like I remember like three or four price cuts on it uh, before it was being sold for like, I, don't, I saw, did I see one at like 50 something or was it lower than that? Well, I've seen them quite low, uh, those three pack Viper packs, which I had my three, my three Vipers right there uh, behind this little, behind the Kraken over here. Um, that three pack seemed more like an unofficial th troop pack for the Hiss. Uh, which one? I'm talking about the. Are you talking about the fire team? Um, agreed. Three basic figures, or do you, did you mean the five per three pack? Because that's pretty cool to think of as well. I I think it's on sale in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. Showed up at Ross. They did, didn't they? Twenty buck discounts. That's nuts. Twenty bucks, man, for a three pack of vipers. See, that's the that's what happens. You if you put it too expensive, no one buys it, and it ends up. Everyone gets it for much, much cheaper, or some people get it for much, much cheaper. Anyway, the Ferret is great. The Ferret um, Scout as well. I'm really into this design. I think it's kind of a uh, really cool uh, deco as well. And I love the fact that we've got these, I don't know, just like elements incorporated into the brand now, a new character, um, and a, as a, sp a specialized driver for the Ferret as well, which is kind of fun. Um, so anyway, and the box art's cool. Again, we're dealing with the um, the kind of the temple in the background um, from the uh, kind of same location that a lot of these figures have kind of been showing up in, like homage location. I believe it's the Yucatan. Am I right in saying that? Because um, this is from that scene with um, uh, from a, a Rise of to Arise, isn't it? With the temple in it. The um, oh god, I've forgotten the I've forgotten the blooming. I've forgotten the name of the the DNA extraction person, the kind of person of interest. Someone let me know in the comments, please. Arise, Spencer, Arise, Yucatan, World's Meanest Salad, Flint and the team, chopping it down, going to this tomb. Montezuma, thank you. Thank you, Snowdrop. That was driving me mad. Thank you, Jedi Ben. Thank you, Snodrich. Thank you, Jedi Ben Montezuma. Um, the officer with two vipers says, Carl. Okay, yeah, the, the, you think that was like an unofficial Hiss Tank three pack, right? That's kind of fun, actually. Um, I've got to look at those vipers again. Yeah, they're a nice dark, actually, they're a bit of a dark color, aren't they? They kind of they look, they work really well with that, with that kind of uh, group. Female Hydra Shield Pack is on Pulse Outlet. The extra heads will work great on Ferret Driver. Well, that's a good shout, Jeffrey. Uh, Ray Murphy in the chat. Hello, Ray. Love the ferret. Hopefully, Gridiron will offer a proper sized anti tank gun for the side, though. Oh, is it really that small? I think it's. A, I think it looks pretty good for. I mean, the one that's on the ferret 
um, the original one, is massive. And also, I used to joke about that with people. Imagine that thing going off while you're on a, a an ATV, while you're riding it. Imagine the force that that would like spin you around with. It would be hilarious, wouldn't it? So yeah, I think I know. I quite I quite like what they did with this um, cannon. I like the uh, the size, the fact you can remove it, the fact you can hold it as a an actual kind of personal weapon, the fact that it clips the different points on the uh, railing on the back as well. Um, I think it's dope, um, and it's a nice again. Like there's kind of an element there where you kind of look at it and you think I could see them like doing a similar thing with an ore striker cannon. Um, maybe not use the same one, but I could definitely see them using a similar kind of you know, like a the railing that goes across the top just clips onto that sort of thing. Um, I think that would be really, really dope. Uh, oh, 788 Major Blood would be sick, Pastor Pierogi. Will these come back to Hasbro? I missed it. Yeah, we, these will pop up again. Have no fear about that. Um, you'll have to be you'll have to be kind of on it though. You'll have to be kind of paying attention at the time. And I know that isn't always easy for a lot of people. It's not always the case. Sometimes these things will happen like randomly during the work week and you know you might not be available to do it um but just you know like keep an eye on i tend to follow uh, there's a good there's a good group of uh, people that keep an eye on this stuff 24 7. uh praternia gij and um jedi jaybird those do uh, on twitter those are all twitter handles and or x whatever you want i don't whatever but they always are posting they always be posting about new things that come into stock, things that are pre-orders and, and have links and, and what have you. So they're good ones to check out. And if you're following them and have like, you know, alerts set up or whatever, then you will definitely know if it pops up again. Uh, believe me. Um, I don't think it's that short, Rachel. I don't think it's so short that she's going to shoot herself in the back. I think it still goes beyond her body on the, um, I think that's just from the image on the front, I think that's just kind of a perspective sort of thing. But I believe it does reach, um, definitely reach the, reaches the figure. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, you can see, look, it goes past the, it goes all the way basically to the point of the handlebars. So it's a pretty lengthy weapon, Kitty said. Um, what I'm amazed at is the huge, huge tires. It's just nuts. Um, Classified or striker confirmed. I mean, it's got to be on the cards, hasn't it, Jeffrey? I wouldn't be surprised if one of those uh, listings for 2025 is an or striker. And I don't know. I would tell you if I did. I would tell you I'd be like, um, we know that these what these are, but like we don't. And I do not know if an or striker is coming. Uh, but that would be freaking phenomenal. And it sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Give us a classified crankcase as well. I think crankcase needs some. He needs a he needs a real good like glow up from his modern four inch classified although it wasn't too bad in oh, i don't know it wasn't too bad in the retro or striker that came out like recent years but i feel like he i feel like he could could he could do with a really good um action figure i'd love to see him in the uh, classified series um chris would you ever do a 10 follows or sites video could be good for video for people just jumping on for places people have missed. Yeah, like um, pit fell up. Yeah, follows like top ten follows. Yeah, that that um is a good shout actually. Maybe I could just do it as a as a yeah like a, a little thing at the end of certain shows and just kind of highlight some people to check out. That that actually makes a good uh, some sense there actually. Um, yes, pass. I'll, I'll I'll think about how to best do that. Maybe it could be one of those like kind of reels or like a TikTok video that then goes shared around everything kind of thing, maybe. Um, yeah. Anyway, right. Um, yeah. And then the, the look at this thing, man. Look at this blooming vehicle. It's, look at the size of that weapon. It's great. Um, I don't know. I'm really into this and I can't, I'm really excited to see this in hand. I think it's going to be a very fun vehicle to play with. I mean display, um, and yeah, I, it's just fun to kind of point out these um, Easter eggs now, isn't it? Like we can see exactly what we were dealing with now. It's it's quite fun to just unlock it, basically. But yeah, it was a it was a ferret scout the whole time, um, and this has always made me laugh. Like the fact that they were they were literally 
just you know drawing a ferret from memory on the vamp box art uh, and it didn't turn out to be what we saw on the box art for the actual ferret either which is also quite funny too um but yeah and and the deco on the on the figure is different too there's like a almost like a, a switch up in the um in the colors like it's a blue base with a kind of gray um you know gauntlets and obviously it's actually the other way around it's gray with the blue gauntlets so awesome stuff lovely I wouldn't mind seeing some early production materials for the ferret designs and decos and stuff because it might have been it might have been a blue character and they were kind of looking at it and go should we switch the deco like then that might have been how simple that process might have been um i, I would do well i will talk to them about that I'll, I'll point out these things and i'll say hey did, was there an idea to maybe do a ferret driver in a different deco like did you have you know that kind of thing i'll ask them definitely um, and of course, here's the grey model helmet they used on the, some of the promo images and what it actually looks like with the deco on it and everything with the fangs. Pretty cool. Pretty dope. Now, the other thing that was revealed at WonderCon was the fact that we have Once a Man Cobra Commander joining the Classified series. So that's another thing to kind of uh, maybe discuss. Now, in my head, I, I sort of can see how this is going to be done. I feel like the right, like a right leg waist piece and helmet head, would be what you use from the original the, the Cobra Commander they have already, and then the change ups would be like a maybe a lower an upper left leg as well could be utilised. So the lower leg would have to be like uh, the lower left leg would have to be like a new part. The torso would have to be new. The arms would have to be new. The kind of secondary that drapes over, like ripped jacket, would have to be new. And then you could have another head sculpt as well. So I could see this one being a lot of fun. And I can almost visualize it in a classified form. It's quite funny how it almost like the fit the, the design of the Cobra Commander, once a man Cobra Commander, almost has like a, a parts breakdown um that makes it very simple to see what needs to be new, if that makes sense. Like it, it, there's no kind of it's like the like I said, the lower left leg, the torso, the arms, and a head sculpt, and of course that secondary. And I think there you go. That would probably be what what to expect. And I'd expect the helmet version. I'd expect the exposed head as well. And um, I don't know, maybe a removable faceplate or a faceplate that's already removed, like a separate piece, um, would be kind of fun as well. So that you know, maybe a roadblock in the future with you know with no pupils painted on could be holding it going. Your face plate. Um, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so that's that. I think that I'm trying to think if there's any, I think that's pretty much it uh, in terms of that. We can run through the listings quickly. So as you can see, I've updated the Ferret Scout is now in the green. Uh, look at the wheels. Uh, so that's over in the green section now. And eventually um, we'll be kind of like, well, actually probably what will happen is I'll keep putting stuff in green over to the side and moving stuff over to the other side. And when we unlock more things, until we've unlocked it completely, we'll still have this leak listings 2024 thing until it's been all unlocked. When it's all unlocked, um, and then you know, like we start seeing when stuff is coming out, we'll we probably work well effectively when it's all green is when it'll be uh like move when we'll move on from it. Um, which I imagine Yojo June will probably take out a lot of this, and then obviously we have uh SDCC PulseCon. Uh, we'll have later kind of exclusive stuff for Target and Walmart. So there'll be different points during the year that that it'll all kind of come to fruition. But um, yeah, it's I'm trying to think of like, maybe do I get rid of some of the stuff that's been in green for ages now? Probably will. But it's nice to know. It's nice to know that certain things are, you know, are there. Um, anyway. What is the Joe version of the ferret, says Justin Anderson? It is a tiger paw. Tiger force version of the ferret. Um, yeah, so that's probably what I think we'll see that at some point as well. Wink, wink. Um, 2025. Oosh. There's nothing really to go on. We don't really need to go over anything. We've gone over everything on here so many times, haven't we? Like, we can't talk about who Bam Bam is yet because we haven't had a, a name only reveal for them. We can't talk about what Road Pig's pet is going to be. Nearly said it then. And we can. <laughs> We uh, so that'll be probably when it gets revealed. Um, Scrappy, we think, might be the two pack for uh, Low Light and Spirit. That's been leaked already. The image has been leaked. We know that Marauder Sarge is Buttercup. 
Uh, we know that Raptor is the SDCC Frankenstein Deluxe. We know that Starduster is Daphne Deluxe and a PulseCon exclusive. Uh, Fred Deluxe, no clue. Whip Snakes 2 pack, I have my thoughts. I have my own thoughts on this that are, are all purely skeptical. S no, not skeptical. Purely sp speculative. I had a little brain fart then. Um, but uh, with Whip Snakes, the fact that it has that Nemesis Immortal, Atlas, Whip Snakes thematic connection just makes me think it's got to be Royal Guards. And I hope it is because we know it's a, a troop builder two pack. But we'll see. We shall see. Um, Yogi and Zorak, we can't talk about yet. Uh, and unless there's a name only reveal, in which case we will. And Blossom VH um, could be all sorts of different things. Um, it's, but we do know that it's Amazon or Famazon. Cobra Commander's Casey. Oki and Azrael are still unknown to us. And we know that the Action Marine and Action Pilot are coming for the 60th. That's it. Any idea when we're getting a reveal for the Action Marine and Pilot? I'd imagine Yojo June in that area. I'd imagine they're going to be doing some sort of big 60th thing, I imagine. And it'll probably be in that in that month of uh, reveals. Yeah, anyway, 2025. We know that Xandar, Saw Viper, Leatherneck, and Dial Tone are the first four figures in the standard retail wave of four in 2025. And then we know that Frag Viper and Blowtorch are involved in the other uh, standard wave of four. When we get the other information, obviously, we and when we get the name only reveals, we'll, we'll fill things in. Um, what else can we say? That's it, I think. Everything else is just have a guess oh the, yeah there is information we know so tt looks to be the um designation for pulse or pulse con so obviously there's only one pulse con exclusive and that is probably arthur deluxe because he's the only deluxe in that tt group um we think sp philip and gg hudson could be store exclusives but we don't know yet so sp could be target gg could be warm up but we don't know uh bb just means you're kind of like standard deluxe and your standard figure pet there's no like it's just like a, another level up designation for your um available everywhere sort of figures uh so daria deluxe will be a deluxe figure you can get everywhere and salvador pet will be a figure and pet set as they always are um what else do we know and then the, the last thing that we are fully aware of is that legacy rr tommy listing is a 60th um situation so 60th um probably won't be called 60th next year it'll be called legacy probably or something else but legacy is the code word for it so it it's very likely that it'll be a legacy will be the code word for it will be the actual word for it as well for the branding going forward and then of course we've got a crap ton of retro classified uh to come three waves of three um but yeah we'll um we'll we'll inform when we can on all of that but it's a pretty stacked uh, roster, isn't it? Two pretty stacked listings there, and it's crazy. Um, now, the other kind of thing that's floating around, we don't have confirmation yet. As soon as I get confirmation of what this situation is, whether it's a relaunch or it's a or it's a plan and can, I think it's a planned and then can situation. I don't think this is going to be happening, but if it does, then so be it. Uh, but the um, these were new selfie series listings that emerged via his tank. Uh, while, a little while ago, and uh, one is a Cobra Officer and one is Storm Shadow, but we just don't know any of the details. So, you know, I'm ass I'm assuming it was planned and then did you know scrapped, but we will we will find out eventually, won't we? I guess. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's pretty much it on that. Um, now, name only reveals that we know are coming are them. Uh, Starduster, Alpine, Leatherneck, Dialtone, and Blowtorch for the Joes. Road Pig, Frag Viper, Iron Grenadiers, Nemesis Immortal, Once a Man Cobra Commander, Saw Viper, Raptor, and Xandar for Cobra and their affiliates. Um, now, uh, what can what was going to say? Yes, so I, I'm doing a series of videos called Let's Talk Classified, and I'll be talking about Frag Viper, I think tomorrow, if I can squeeze it in. And um, yeah, we'll be doing Frag Viper tomorrow. And then maybe in the week, I'll see if I can get Blowtorch done. And then we'll be doing Road Pig. And then I'll try and do an episode on Once a Man Cobra Commander, but it's going to be short. <laughs> um, then like, like well, actually short on content, long on time, on running time. That's how it, that's how it goes usually. Um, 
Why no Dawn Moreno yet? Well, you never know. Dawn could be in one of the listings. I don't know, but you never know, because there's obviously there's loads we don't know yet. Why no Footloose yet? Again, Jeremy, could be one of the listings. You never know. Um well, you know, it's all it's all it's a, it's a patient waiting game at this stage, isn't it? Uh, but they're good shouts. Footloose and Dawn Moreno are good shouts. Uh, to be, you know, to be honest, um, it could be a Snake Eyes listing. Yes, that's true, Carl. Uh, Dawn Moreno could be a Snake Eyes li listing. Female Crimson Guardsman from the comics, says Chris. That's a good shout. Laura three four three. Yes, brilliant. Um, Okay, so yeah, so I'll be doing those in that order. So Frag Viper, then Blowtorch, then Road Pig, then Cobra Commander. Uh, and I'm not going to go through every Cobra Commander that's ever been. God, no. We're just going to be focusing on this particular element of Cobra Commander. Um, because, yeah, we'll be there for months. Otherwise. I, it will take me seven months to put the video graphics together. Anyway, that's your name only reveals. Uh, digital renders that we're still waiting on. Now, I obviously am going to be talking with Emily, Lenny, and Tony uh, on video for um, you know an interview um, soon. I'm going to be asking them about um, the Dragonfly, any updates. They might, you never know, they might even better show some figures on that particular episode, which I'm hoping for. Like, if Emily wants to use the, the full force as that outlet to show off uh, the figures, then great. I will, I'll run it by her and see what she thinks. But um, maybe that could be something that we get in terms of uh, an exclusive look at those figures. That'd be kind of fun, actually, I think. Um, but yeah, that's something that we'll be working on. And um, I really do want to see these figures so bad. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to see all three of those. Um, either way, I'm sure we'll get an update at some point. If I don't get that exclusive, I'm sure it will be an event um, either during Yojo June or before Yojo June. Um, easy for me to say. Um, but yeah, that's the the remaining digital renders that we have left. It's crazy, isn't it, how they come and go so quickly? Um, unofficial leaks, uh, like I said in other episodes, and just to confirm, we have had multiple sources, two sources now, um, not two different ones, two overall, uh, discuss the fact that Snowcat and Thunder Machine are coming. So there's a possibility that that has a little more weight to it now so there's um that's why they're still on on the screen um so th th that's quite exciting um ig bat yeah okay uh we know that's coming mad marauders two pack obviously has been leaked visually so we've seen low light and, and spirit we've seen the sarge and um in terms of retro cobra commander that's been known for a long time now and uh heart wrencher is yeah we can also kind of confirm that that's on its way on, on our way at some point because let's face it she was in that listing with Nemesis Immortal, Starduster, and Road Pig. You couldn't pick a more random group of four figures for a, a favorite list of things I want to see in the classified series. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, at this point, I think the world is ready for a proper Snake Eyes version 4. They usually want a version of Snake Eyes at different points in the line for newcomers. Absolutely, Comicsy Cafe, and I would absolutely be all over a uh, Snake Eyes version for one hundred percent. How do you know the two sources are different? Well, that's the that's what I've mentioned before, Stanley. They are different sources, but we don't know if one of those sources is just hearing it from um, the other, and we don't know if those two particular separate sources are hearing it from one direct. But that's the thing: if they are, it's coming from the same place. That doesn't necessarily mean that it, it might just be coming from Ground Zero, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not saying, but that's the thing. I'm not saying it's confirmed. I'm saying we've heard it now from two separate places, and the other the other place, as far as we know, wasn't aware of the other place talking about it. So that is all I'll say on that. Uh, but yeah, that's effectively what I'm getting at. I'm not saying it's confirmed. I'm saying it just makes it a little bit more likely. Um, Ninja Force Snake Eyes, yeah, that'd be really cool. If you can't get a name only reveal. Um, how about asking for a new sub team name reveal? Well, if they have one, they might not have. They might not have one. I mean, they, they we already know Iron Grenadiers are coming. We already know Cobra Lara is, is is here, and like it's only if Sonic Fighters, Ninja Force, and that are actually being worked on. But you know, you, you don't know, do you? You never know. I'll see what they say, Ben. I'll see what they say. Um, it's time for Shadow Ninjas in the line. Absolutely. 
um, so much intrigue. It does feel like that, actually, Sam. It does feel very like mysterious, doesn't it? Um, and then, oh, I've got too. I went too far. All right, we've come to the end now of the uh, the whole kind of episode. Let's get into shout outs uh, before I get ahead of myself again. Have you tried Hoarder yet? No? Well, you need to. If you have a collection of things and want to create a fun and easy way of organising it and, of course, showing it off, then get involved. You can post items and build collections and you can drop a status by getting a fun delivery or seeing some awesome related stuff on your travels. Build your collections with Hoarder. The app is free to download on Google Play and the App Store, so what are you waiting for? Get to hoarding. Yeah, I got excited for it. I got you all excited for a bullhorn reveal then, didn't I, Pastor Brody? It's like, oh, classified bullhorn, bullhorn confirmed. No, not at all. Uh, just joke. Oh, that's our image for the, you know, the shout outs, isn't it? Anyway, big shout out, of course, first up to... Uh, to Pat and Phil. Pat for not obviously being on the show today. He is busy, but he'll be back next week. And of course, to Phil, um, shout out Articulated Points. Check him out on YouTube. Very awesome. And of course, they get it done when it comes to panels. Uh, thank you very much, Phil, for getting that WonderCon panel uh, streamed for everyone to watch. That was very awesome of you. And it was a really good quality stream as well. So thank you very much for that. Um, anyway, shout out to those two absolute legends. Also, a big shout out to my wonderful wife, Kate, and Phoebes, and the whole families in the UK and the US. We've got actually, um, we've got family c t coming very soon to visit. So we're very excited to have both the US crew out at one point and then the UK crew shortly in the, in the, in the summer. So I'm very excited for all that stuff. Um, and then uh, also a massive shout out to Brian Sauer for the amazing graphics. Uh, I've got Brian working overtime again. Sorry, Brian, um, for some redacted graphics so that we can do the uh, Hasbro thing nice and smooth. Um, I do need a new pick, don't I? I do. I need new picks of everything. Um, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll update that for next weekly, just for you, RKW. Um, and anyway, shout out to Brian for the, all the great work he does. And of course, related to Brian, Assembly Required, uh, the 13th annual G.I. Joe convention in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, Chris, I believe today is Tartan Day. Do you consider yourself as a Tartan? Yes, I do. I've got my own Tartan. I actually wore it for my wedding, um, McLeod Tartan. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, there's multiple McLeod Tartans. We've got a home kit, away kit, and a third kit, and a European strip. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of kits, um, but anyway, yeah, I've, I've, there's a lot of McLeods uh, tartans. But um, anyway, the, speaking of tartan, look on the screen. Yes, uh, of course, like I said, Des Moines, Iowa, assembly required in-person um, uh, convention for GI Joe, put on by the awesome Brian Sauer and the team at Codename Iowa, and that will be on the eighth and 9th of the of November of this year. So get that. Uh, obviously, more information to follow, of course, in including hotel information, um, travel information, hotel information, well, I said hotel, um, ticket information, that kind of stuff. There'll be a lot more info to follow eventually. Um, as well as that, though, they're also putting on Operation Armor, which is the online version of Assembly Required. Um, that is the fourth version of uh, Operation Armor, and that's happening in June of 2024. Lots of cool stuff to look out for. And again, more information will be made available um, in as we go forward. But just to keep you aware, there's an, there's an online version of it as well. Um, then, massive shout out to Brian Hickey and Total Toy Books for this beauty that he posted the other day of a, like that heavy iron grenadier. And just look at that. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, there's a little stealth bomber in the background as well. Very cool. And the um, wild boar as well, you can see there in his, uh, I forget what that's called now, the Iron Grenadiers massive thing. But yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah, very much, very much into that. And the red sky as well, just like, ah, oh, very cool, the explosion. There's a lot going on there. Very neat. Um, anyway, yeah, that's awesome. And then, of course, massive shout out to Robo Skull Mark to a Skeletron, of course, who posted uh, some updates, uh, Easter updates, actually, I believe they were, but the factory test deco, which you can see kind of like a wash on there. And you can also see the glow in the dark eye plopped in there as well, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, what was I saying? 
yeah, so that's that's all. So um, there was comments I was trying to kind of follow there. But anyway, yeah, they posted a lot of cool updates. Uh, that's really dope looking. Then the in-package sort of packaging tray sample. I mean, I look at that and I look at how tiny those drones look on that thing. And I think, my God, that is going to be massive. Um, anyway, amazing stuff. And of course, the uh, test shot head for the Red Shadow six inch figure, which also looks great. Uh, I kind of love the design on this one. I love the, there's a lot of character in that kind of like raised eyebrow sort of vibe. And then you've got like the texture and everything. It looks really, really cool. I can't wait to start seeing all of this stuff. I swear it's going to be the best. Um, also, uh, shout out to Marauder Gunrunners who are doing, I think tonight at 10.30 p.m. EST, actually, if I'm correct in saying that. Um, it's kind of like a, sorry, I, I, I'll have to I'll just get the information up. Because I, I did have it ready at hand and then changed because I was looking for something else, wasn't I? Uh, but basically, um, yes, it is a Marauder geared up event, uh, the Outland Sentinel with the lethal scout drone sidekick sporting the skeleton, the Skeletron Skeledrone head, weathered cloak from JCC, which is Josh's custom capes, and weapon equipped Skeledrone, Wasteland Apocalyptic Survival at its finest. We hope you join us this Saturday at 10 p.m. EST. Thanks for your support, Marauder John and MGR team. You can get more information at marauderinc.com. Um, there you go. And I do like, I think this is kind of cool looking, like a little post-apocalyptic, um, you know, like Skeletron sort of vibe. I, I, it's dope. It's really cool. So anyway, shout out to Marauder and Skeletron for this little uh, beauty. And um, I believe that's a four-inch figure as well. Um, yes, I believe. Yeah, of course it is. Anyway, that's that. Am I heading to Joe Fest this year, Chris? I would like to. Uh, the plan is that we want to do that, but we're trying to work out logistics. But we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how the how it pans out with that one. Honestly, uh, but my my do I would like to definitely. Um, right now, uh, as well as that um, news, we have uh, this was posted by Three D Joes, of course, and of course they are finally kind of getting together the Digipack, which was part of the, uh, like, I'm not sure if it's an all-in or like a mega all-in aspect of the Omnibus hardcover, but uh, obviously 3D Joe's Carson has done some amazing um, kind of, you know, um, media to go along with it. Lots of interviews, and they've got this in this amazing presentation as well, which is so cool to have it in that kind of like, um, you know, the, the the figure pack, which is just dope. Uh, but yeah, to give you some more information, it says inside the art of, of G.I. Joe, Real American Hero Digipack, you'll find four Blu-ray discs featuring 10 hours of content with over eight hours of all new interviews. That's bonkers. Featured creators include Kirk Bazigian, VP of Boys Toys, Vinny D'Oliva, G.I. Joe brand manager, Ed Morrill, brand packaging, sorry, branding and packaging executive, Ron A. Rudat, designer, Mark Pennington, designer, Douglas Hart, packaging illustrator, Bill Merkline, sculptor, and Larry Harmer, author and artist. Grab some popcorn and get ready for some classic stories from the Toy Wars. Digipacks ship this summer. Pre-order your digipack at theartofgijo.com. Can't wait until summer. Check out the Art of G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Omnibus cover, etc. Oh, you can read the post anyway. But how cool is that? How cool is that? That is a lot of stuff. Um, hopefully, I do see you there, Ray. Yes, at Joe Fest. Hopefully. But anyway, lots and lots of awesome stuff involved in that set. So shout out to Carson and, um, of course, the amazing 3D Joe's um, situation that's going on there. Um, just amazing stuff. And uh, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this, but, you know, I think you get what you pay for and you get what you wait for. You know, good things come to those who wait. I also love the fact that they've continued the characterization of the people with the with figures as well. I think that's really cool on there. Anyway, brilliant, brilliant stuff. So, yeah, that's awesome. Now, um, well, as well as all of the really cool, fun, amazing things that are happening, uh, we have had some pretty sad news this week. Um, with the passing of Mark D. Bright, also known as Doc, as well, in the, to his friends. Um, now, Mark Bright was an amazing was amazing artist and did some incredible work on like a lot of different you know um, comics and a lot of different franchises. But obviously, for us, obviously GI Joe is a pretty big one uh, for everybody. Um, you know, a lot of fans of the Marvel comics as well back in the day i mean there's a lot of you i'm one of them um and mark bright um, and and yeah mark's work on the gi joe 
brand was absolutely stellar. Uh, in actual fact, one that really sticks out to me um, more than more than anything was the fact that I, I've always associated uh, um, Mark with the work he did um, when Snake Eyes got revealed, like his face was revealed and he had all the scars and everything like that. And I'll always kind of, you know, remember that he, you know, he was the one that kind of drew that. And it was always quite really like, you know, it's a powerful moment when you see that face. So, um, for yeah, for a lot of you, you'll know I'm talking about a lot of the comic fans who uh, read the Marvel comics back in the day, obviously have a lot of good things to say about Mark. He His work was pretty phenomenal when he was on the book. Um, and he kind of did a lot of like, he did some like guest spots, didn't he, kind of early-ish, and then kind of did a lot. Like there was a period of time where he was doing a lot of the Marvel comics as well with uh, with G.I. Joe. So rest in peace, Mark. It's uh, re desperately sad uh, to lose another absolute legend in, um, you know, and it, not just in G.I. Joe as well, but like, you know, Mar Iron Man, Armor Wars, Green Lantern, whatever you... There's so many different things he did amazing work for. It's not just G.I. Joe, but... Obviously, that does relate to us quite strongly. Um, now, um, I also saw a really nice post by Larry uh, Harmer on on his on his page as well, which talked about you know the fact that he, I think he spoke to him a few weeks uh, prior to him passing, and he, Larry said he didn't realise at the time, but um, it felt like you know Mark was kind of saying goodbye, like knowing without saying sort of thing, and he didn't realise that until like later on, which is you know desperately sad, but. Um, you know, I love the fact that, you know, he was he was given the nickname Doc as well. Uh, that's kind of fun. Um, and yeah, like, again, like, I, it's desperately sad. And uh, just want to say rest in peace uh, to MD Bright. And of course, a massive thoughts and, and, and our like, you know, commiserations to family and friends at this difficult time. Uh, okay. Now, um, on from that, we've, we got, I didn't want to like end it on that necessarily, um, but I, I did want to talk a little bit about Kickley again. It's like the Kickley segment, isn't it? Uh, and even though Kickley's been very deep in kind of like X Men stuff recently and some other cool like bits of art he's been doing, he did find time to squeeze out a couple more GI Joe pieces. So here's another Snake Eyes and Scarlet kind of um, situation. Again, there's been like a almost like a running theme recently with these two characters taking out Vipers left, right, and center. And of course, uh, this beauty um, of Scarlet, Clutch, and Stalker on the Vamp Mark II, which is pretty dope. Vamp Mark II confirmed, right? Um, ben says, when can you get... Well, as I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. I'll be doing a live interview with Brian from Total Toy Books um, this week coming. So we'll be getting that done at some point. I'll let you know when that's going to happen, of course, when we work out the best time to do it. Um, and yeah, we'll get that one um, sorted very soon. But yeah, it's already prepped and everything. So it's just a matter of getting it uh, worked out with uh, with Brian. But yeah, we'll be doing that very soon, Ben. So that, that answers your question on that one. But anyway, massive shout out to Kickley as well. Great, great work as always. And uh, that brings me to the end of the Full Force Weekly. Yes, I've gone two hours. That's what happens when I'm on my own. Um, I tend to overcompensate, don't I? Um, anyway, that's I think that's what happens. I think with Pat as well, when we realise we don't have much to talk about, we desperately try to overcompensate when we don't need to. Uh, anyway, overcompensation, that's what we are all about at the Full Force. <laughs> someone's overcompensating right um thank you guys for another awesome episode like i said we've got let's talk classified frag viper to come this weekend we've got um interviews with hasbro and specifically lenny sorry emily lenny and tony um we've got an interview with um matt cohen shooting the galaxy as soon as we get it you know approved and we have an interview with brian coming up as well so a packed stacked like amount of videos and content coming your way um yeah stay fresh cheese bags is all i'll say at this point um guys thank you so much for joining thanks for all the support thanks to all our patrons and all of you guys in the in the comments and everything really appreciate it um stay fresh cheese bags and as always after three you know what to do one two three full four See ya.
Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram so check us out there as well at The Full Force Podcast and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force